My name is Carol, and I am currently 37 years old. I'll tell you about an interesting event I had and how I quickly dealt with it since I'm not easily fooled. Surprisingly, before things went south, I got along well with my mother-in-law, unlike many of the stories I've heard. Our relationship was harmonious, warm, flawless, and based on respect for one another. Frank, my spouse, was not only my best friend, but also my partner in crime and the love of my life. Everything appeared to be picture perfect to me. This is neither a mistake or a misconception on my behalf. We did argue from time to time, just like any other family would, but nothing appeared out of the ordinary. But I was confused by the unexpected turn of events that transpired thereafter. Allow me to recount the event and explain my decision to exact revenge on my mother-in-law and spouse. I had taken Frank and myself on a vacation that I had initially planned as something special for our family. But I chose to include my widowed sister-in-law, Tiana, since I knew how lonely she was. I paid for the majority of the trip's expenses, including lodging, food, and activities. Their additional costs were exclusively Frank and Tiana's responsibility. Treating them to a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Spain meant discovering its colorful streets, indulging in tapas, and basking in the Mediterranean heat. I was enthusiastic at the prospect of improving our relationship and making enduring memories. I had no idea that this wonderful journey would set off a series of events that would rock the basis of trust and demolish the myth of our idyllic family. Rewinding to that fateful day, I stood in the living room with smiles on my face, holding travel tickets, full of promise and hope for our dreams of Spain. I gathered Tiana and Frank and told them about the surprise. With a look of puzzlement on their features, they looked at each other. Tiana cocked a small head tilt, her eyes wise. I hoped to see happiness and appreciation in their eyes as I gracefully handed them the tickets and explained about our upcoming trip to Spain. Frank's expression brightened, showing real excitement. You really are something else, Carol, he said. I was filled with anticipation as I looked forward to our amazing voyage beginning. But Tiana's grin was kinder when she looked up into my eyes. Oh my goodness, Carol, you've really beyond yourselves. This is an immeasurable gift. I'm really moved, she said. I felt a surge of pride and pleasure in my heart at that time. Their responses confirmed my feelings of love and work that went into this surprise. I had imagined that this trip would be the glue that would make our relationship stronger, strengthening the links that were already seemingly indestructible and producing priceless memories. But as you may have guessed, this story takes a dangerous turn. Beneath the surface of our seemingly perfect relationship, a convoluted web of treachery and deceit was waiting to trap us all. The unraveling of the truth would put the fundamental foundation of family ties to the test and push the boundaries of forgiveness. We got on the plane and started our two-week journey as scheduled. As we immersed ourselves in the colorful streets and rich tapestry of Spanish culture, the excitement was evident. The first week passed smoothly, filled with dancing to the contagious rhythms of flamenco, exploring historic monuments, and savoring the tastes of pala. There was laughter and happiness in the air, and I felt proud to think that our relationship would never fail. But I had no idea that a storm was building up over the horizon ready to pour its wrath down on my gullible heart. I awoke to an empty hotel room on a fateful Monday morning as the sun sent golden rays over the city. My heart was filled with confusion and a mounting sense of discomfort. I grabbed for my phone in a panic, calling Tiana's and my husband's phones in the hopes of getting an explanation. To my dismay, though, their voices and phones stayed silent. As I looked around the empty room for any indication of their presence, fear started to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness. There were no messages, no baggage, no signs of fight or disruptions, 
just an eerie quiet that hung thick in the air. The minutes seemed to drag on forever as hopelessness threatened to overwhelm me. It seemed like I was abandoned in a strange and alien world. A ray of hope broke through the obscurity. There was a buzz on my phone, indicating a new call. It was Tiana. I felt a wave of relief that was mixed with bewilderment and intense hurt. How could she walk away silently? I took the phone with apprehension, my voice full of a mixture of doubt and worry. Where are you, Tiana? What took place? I inquired. I heard Tiana's voice. It was tinted with a peculiar combination of frustration and resignation. It was not, though, the same lovely voice I had known my whole life. It sounded more icy. Carol, my phone was ringing nonstop, so I thought I should return your call. I apologize for upsetting you. Simply put, I wanted to know where you two went. I was worried that something horrible had happened because your suitcases aren't here. The next thing she said, with a callousness that struck me, was, we left you. But why? What happened? I couldn't bear to spend another week in your company, so I had to leave. Did I do something wrong? Yes. I mean, how could you be so dense? Excuse me. You sprung up this trip on me, practically forcing me to go with you. I couldn't remain disingenuous any longer. Let me spell it out clearly for you, Carol. I don't enjoy your company. Sure, we can spend a couple of hours together at a family event, but two weeks. I tried to be civil and grace you with my presence for as long as I could. Turns out I could only master one week with you before I lost my mind. I'm sorry, but I'm on the way to the airport with Frank right now. We can't be around you any longer. Shock reverberated through my core as the revelation struck me like a bolt of lightning, unraveling the threads of trust I had so naively woven. How could our seemingly unbreakable bond crumble beneath the weight of unspoken grievances? Questions flitted through my mind as I grappled with this harsh reality. What had I done wrong? What exactly did I do to deserve such harshness? How did things escalate to this point? Was there no chance for reconciliation? Confusion and heartache intertwined within me, the pain of betrayal seeping deep into my soul. I didn't know you felt this way, Tiana, honestly, and you had no reason to. I'd always led you to assume that things were fine and dandy between us. Why not bring that up? Why not sit me down so that we could hash out whatever problem there was between us? Because if I'm being honest, I still don't know what I've done to wrong you. That's the thing. I just can't put my finger on it. But you just hurt me. What? That's the most childish thing I've ever heard. You can't stand me just because of some inexplicable irk. Grow up, Tiana. I thought I offended you or something, but I didn't do anything wrong, right? Not necessarily, but it doesn't matter. What matters is how I feel about you, and I feel that you're annoying, and I just can't stand being around you. If that's the case, then why did you say yes to coming with us on this trip? Because it was a free trip to Spain. No one is going to turn down that opportunity. But as the days went by, I grew more and more tired of your antics. What antics, Tiana? What did I do that was so bad that you decided to leave me all alone in a foreign country? She failed to answer, and I grew more impatient with this impromptu disdain coming out of nowhere. I was shocked, hurt, confused, and angry. But most of all, I was just sad. I had to inquire about my beloved husband and what he had to say in all of this. Let me speak to Frank. Casually and easily, Tiana passed the phone on to Frank, assuming someone likely Frank was eavesdropping on the entire conversation. He responded with the same indifference and coldness as his mother. Hello, really, Frank. You decided to leave me too. I didn't leave you because I don't like you. I left because my mom needed me to take her home. 
So you knew about all of this. How long have you known about your mother's apparent hatred towards me? For some time now. I was hoping this trip would bring her closer to you, but I was wrong. Okay, but what I'm failing to understand is why none of you approached me about this. We're all adults, meaning if there's an issue, we solve it. It's not like we haven't had arguments in the past. We sat down and solved those arguments. What's different about this time? Frank failed to answer, mirroring his mother's earlier silence. The only thing I can safely conclude about this entire stupid debacle is that your mother hates me for a silly reason, which she knows isn't valid. Maybe she's jealous of me or something. Maybe I have something she can't have, and she knows she can't speak up about it without sounding foolish. So she's beating around the bush. Am I correct in assuming that? Their resounding silence affirmed my assumption. Well, I can say that I'm honestly shocked. I didn't know that you two felt this way about me. I hope you have a safe flight back home. I cut the call, pacing around the hotel room, still trying to understand the issue. As I contemplated whether I deserved this treatment, I realized that 37 years on this planet had taught me that sometimes people hate for no apparent reason, driven by jealousy or bitterness. It's not uncommon, but the last people I expected this behavior from were my own family. After sobbing for some time, I had an epiphany, taking me back to the moment when I decided to take control of my destiny and seek vengeance against those who wronged me without cause. It was a pivotal moment that would forever change the course of my life. Wiping away my tears, a newfound determination welled up within me. I refused to waste any more precious emotions on their actions. It was time to show them they couldn't trample over my heart and get away with it. With trembling fingers, I dialed my childhood friend Arlo's number. Knowing I could trust him with my day, cautiously asked if he could assist me in my quest for justice. Arlo, always the loyal and mischievous friend, listened intently, his voice filled with a mix of concern and excitement, reassuring me that he had my back. Carol, my dear friend, you're a force to be reckoned with, and you know you can count on me for anything and everything. So what are you planning on doing? Well, Arlo, you know how your construction company always has excess sawdust. Yes, it can be quite a hassle to get rid of sometimes. I believe I've found the perfect use for it. His curiosity peaked as I unraveled my plan like a carefully crafted script, detailing how we would execute the ultimate act of retaliation. Bags of sawdust would be delivered to Tayana's house, infiltrating every corner and crevice, leaving an indelible mark of chaos and betrayal. Arlo couldn't help but smile at the brilliance of my idea. A subtle yet impactful reminder to Tiana of the stress she had unleashed upon my life. Armed with Arlo's expertise and my newfound determination, we set our plan into motion. The question arose, how would we get inside the house before they returned? You need to get the spare key hidden under the potted plant on the patio, then you'll be in. Wow, you thought of everything, huh? I'm not one to be played with. I think I'm a reasonable woman, but if they want to go lower and act childish, then I'll go even lower. Adagirl. As the hours passed, anticipation swirled within me. Arlo assured me that the mission was complete, and soon I would witness the fallout of our carefully orchestrated chaos. Then, like a sweet melody in my ear, my phone chimed with a message from Arlo. I eagerly opened the pictures he had sent revealing a sight to behold. Tiana's once pristine home now resembled a post-apocalyptic wasteland, drowned in a sea of sawdust. Every nook and cranny had been touched by our mischievous hands, a scene straight out of a surrealistic painting, an embodiment of the chaos that had unfolded in our lives. I called Arlo, and his laughter echoed through the phone. I couldn't help but join in. It was a cathartic release a shared moment of triumph against those who had betrayed me. 
I expressed my heartfelt gratitude to Arlo, acknowledging his willingness to tread the path of mischief with me. He simply said, Naughty can be so satisfying, my friend. As the clock ticked away, I could feel the tension building within me. How would Frank and Diana react when they walked through the doors of their once beloved home? The anticipation was almost unbearable, a heady mix of nerves and vindication. I couldn't help but relish the thought of their bewildered faces and disarrayed emotions. Hours later, my phone erupted with frantic energy. It was Frank, his voice laced with panic and disbelief, as he described the chaotic scene that awaited them, the sawdust-covered house standing as a testament to their betrayal. My heart danced with wicked delight as I listened to his exasperated voice. At that moment, I knew that the message had been received loud and clear. Their actions had consequences, and the chaos they had sown had come back to haunt them. Carol, it's just awful. Mom is in hysterics. I decided to reveal the part I played in this and said, it serves both of you right. How could you leave me here alone without a valid reason, no less? Wait, Carol, was this your doing? The wailing and panic in the background stopped, and instead, I approached Frank's phone. I heard my mother-in-law say, give me that. Before shouting in my ear, how could you do this to us, to me? I have no idea what you're talking about. Have you considered that this is just your karma? Oh, come on, Carol. We all know it was you. Who else would have access to my home? It's very easy to break into someone's home nowadays, Tiana, especially if you don't have any security cameras installed, which, by the way, you should seriously consider doing to prevent things like this from happening again. Honestly, Carol, how can you do this to us? When are we supposed to sleep? This sawdust is making my lungs ache. Oh, that's right. You probably forgot to get the keys to my house, huh? Well, that's a shame. I'm guessing you two are going to have to stay in yet another hotel. But for how long? Until I decide to come back from my vacation, I guess. I mean, I paid for two weeks, after all, and who knows. I might feel greedy and decide to extend my stay. Frank then took the phone from Tiana, and she began to bawl once again, mourning her ruined furniture. Carol, this was foul. How could you do this? I'm not sure why you think that I'm involved in this at all. How, after all, could I? I'm lounging in the hotel's jacuzzi right now. How am I able to accomplish this? The two of them were plainly perplexed about what had transpired, so I suppressed my laughing. They didn't have any concrete evidence, but they suspected me, which I plainly did, of being involved in it. I thus reveled in the knowledge that they were irritated, but had nowhere to vent their rage. A wave of satisfaction swept over me as I hung up the phone to say goodbye to Frank. I had seized charge of my story, leaving them to deal with the fallout from what they had done. Knowing Tiana's age, I knew what I did was disgusting and maybe harmful. I mean, staying in that place for even one night might have detrimental effects on one's health. However, I was aware that they wouldn't dare consider remaining there. It was too much tampered with to be livable. All they could do was depend on spending a little more time at a hotel. I spent that extra week in Spain, taking in the culture as I had planned since I didn't want my money to go to waste. My mother-in-law and husband were probably apprehensive about finding a cleaning service that would take on such a difficult assignment. My mother-in-law would have to remain with us at my house while the house was being professionally cleaned, but I had no idea how long that would take. Given that she seemed to have canceled our meeting, I knew she would be agitated the whole time. Some of you should be reminded by this that not everyone has to learn the hard way. Furthermore, by all means, administer your own justice if the situation calls for it. Give them something truly to be angry about. The worst kept secrets. 
Once I had shared my entire being and explained the horrible betrayal, 